So welcome everybody. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Jan Lehman. I'm the owner of CTC Productivity. And with me here is my wonderful team, Nancy Kreschke and Walter Jankowski. And if you've been following along, we've been doing a webinar series for about a year now. And it's all around how to leverage Microsoft 365 in a virtual world and beyond. So really how to use 365 to solve some of our most pressing business issues. Um, the format that we use is we do a, really more of a monologue, 20 minute topic where we just share a bunch of thoughts and then we open it up for Q&A. Uh, normally when we do training, it's more interactive and we go at a pace that makes sense for the audience, but be forewarned that if you haven't been following along, you might be like, what the heck is a OneNote? And we make the assumption you know what OneNote is. So, um, but the good news is we have all the past recordings out on our website, so you can go back and look at those, and Walter's going to enter into chat where you can find those recordings. But every time we do one of these sessions, it goes out on the website, and the recordings are there. So go ahead and start as we start going through. Nancy's going to be our speaker today. Go ahead and start thinking about your questions and entering them into chat. And again, Nancy will do about a 20-minute monologue about the topic, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, but we'd love to know your thoughts there. Um, we also want to ask if there's a topic around 365 that you're interested in, please enter that in chat as well, because we're always brainstorming on what people would like to hear about. So we'd love for you to share that. Um, on that note, let's talk about today. What we're going to be talking about is managing performance using OneNote. And then coming into next month. We're actually going to go a little old school next month, and we're going to go back just to basic outlook. Uh, what we're finding in a lot of our coaching sessions and a lot of our project improvement projects, that a lot of our clients don't really know the basics of how to leverage your calendar. And so we want to go old school and go back to some of those um, hardcore foundational skills around outlook. So we're going to do that in May. So if you're interested in that one, um, Walter's going to enter the link for you to register. And again, on our website, um, there's an opportunity for you to register for any of the upcoming sessions as well. And then in June, uh, Nancy's going to do the Outlook one. Walter's back. If you like music, Walter always does his music. So he'll be doing the June one. And he's going to be talking about some of the new features within 365 related to scheduling external meetings. So that'll be an interesting one as well. Um, I have a couple slides I'm going to hit on, and then we'll turn it over to Nancy. Uh, we love this slide. Uh, we see the benefits all the time and the clients we're working with. Uh, the Wall Street Journal says there's a 40% improvement opportunity for people to be more organized and productive, and that's organized in a lot of different ways. And we help clients get to that level or around there all the time. There's just lots of opportunity. Um, also, people really don't leverage the technology fully. I actually did a training session this morning on email management. And, you know, email's been around for 25 years and people still don't know some of the basic features. Walter, you can go ahead and advance if you don't mind. And um, so you can imagine with 365, if like emails have been around for 25 years and people are still learning new things, then 365, there's a world of opportunities. So we're excited we're here, you're here. We're excited you're gonna learn earlier on in the curve about the functionality and the features and start using it and not waiting 25 years. So we're glad you're here. So on that note, I'll turn it over to Nancy. Great, thanks, Jan. So what we're gonna to cover today is we're gonna talk about using OneNote and I'm gonna be demoing using the OneNote desktop version. There are multiple actually versions of OneNote. So just uh, recognize I'm using the OneNote desktop app. So managing performance for yourself personally throughout the year, and if you have direct reports, uh, how to manage those. With direct reports, you typically have one-on-one -on -one meetings. So we're gonna talk about uh, also using OneNote to uh, capture the information for those OneNote note meeting. One, let's try that again, one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, and then we'll go ahead and close out. If you have any questions throughout, go ahead and use that chat feature. And then we will come back to those as we get through the presentation. So, um, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to put in the chat right now. So what emotions, when you think of performance review, oh, what emotions do you have when you think of that annual performance review time? And just go ahead and type a few of those in there. Or does the whole, you know, the whole importance or the whole, does one, um, boy, I'm having trouble talking this morning. 
does just the whole concept of performance review, does it monopolize your whole calendar for weeks? And you can feel free and say yes or no. Do you struggle with remembering what you did or what an employee did well or what they need improvement on throughout the year? So, and the reason that I bring those up is because using OneNote to capture your personal and your direct report information um, challenges and wins, um, it just makes review time so much easier. I love that we have uh, comments coming in. Uh, so we'll come back in uh, maybe a little bit later, Walter or Jan can, maybe you just want to read a couple of those off. Jan? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was muted. Yep, stress. Um, I mean, I remember back being in corporate America and a lot of stress around performance reviews. Big struggles. Yes, yes, big struggles. So emphasis there from Andrew. Um, measuring and accountability is mentioned as well. Trying to summarize a year in one week. That's a great one. It is, it's tough. So where can we capture this information? And some of you might be going, you know, hey, I, um, I get it in emails, whether it's from the employee that I'm working with, one of my direct reports, if I get it from somebody that they're collaborating with, but then still at the end of the year, you have to go through all your emails and try and dig through those to find that information. So I'm going to show you how you can get the email over into OneNote. But first, I want to talk about, you know, the different um, ways that you can organize a OneNote notebook. And I'm going to start with just personal performance, because even for ourselves, if we don't capture that, you know, we have to go ahead and fill out that performance review process for ourselves and what were our goals and objectives, um, whether it's just an individual or whether you are a manager overseeing a larger group of people, uh, it's still important to capture those. So just create it um, for today's purposes, a, a department performance uh, notebook. And then one of the first sections I created is personal performance. Give you a place to go ahead in that section and add different pages. What are your goals and objectives that were outlined for the year? And is it something that you need to work on? Um, are you, you know, throughout the year, you could even put dates in there. Are you on track with that? So you could check this out. You could put dates in there again and say, hey, as of June, yes, I, I'm on track with, with what I was going to focus on and do to meet that goal or objective. Or have you already met that goal or objective? So if you have four or five or six of them, this is just a nice overview that you can come back to on a monthly basis quarterly basis and go, oh, I forgot I was supposed to focus on that. And oh, I have been focusing on that. And you can uh, take your notes in here. You can put pictures in here. You can add all sorts of things onto this page. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, if you have development goals, so if it's like, I need to improve my time management skills, you could put that in here track what your progress is, what actions are you taking? Are you signing up if we're gonna do, you know, CTC is going to do a time management webinar. Hey, I'm gonna attend that or maybe engage CTC for time management coaching and then the date completed. And you can feel free and add whatever other columns in here to capture the importance of, uh, you know, what, why is this a development need or a goal for me? And you can put all of that information in here, pictures, links, all those kinds of things. And then most importantly, because we talked about how do you want to improve, but what did you do really, really well this year? What project were you working on or overseeing for your team that met its goals and maybe it met them earlier? So what is that win that you had? Are there some specific actions that you took so that you can capture that and say that worked really well and those are some things that uh, attribute it to my win? And then what are the dates of that? Uh, because that's also important. So if you had multiple projects throughout the year and you had four wins, it's always kind of nice to know, did I do that? Was that in January's project or did that get completed in March or, Jan or um, September? So putting that down on there. So uh, could be big wins, could not only be your personal, but your team goals that were met, the team development that was completed because maybe that was one of your goals uh, for you. What, whatever it is, it gives you a space to capture it. Um, so that is a personal performance. And that can be in a one particular one notebook that has all these performance things, or that could be in your 
personal notebook. So it doesn't matter where you put that section. I just have them all in one for today's presentation. So if we talk about the team performance and you have this group of direct reports and they also have goals and objectives. So I just created this first page that says kind of what's the whole process? Put all my direct reports in here and what their goals and objectives are for the year. During the year, then you can add what they have done, what they still need to improve on and their big wins, just like we talked about for you personally. And this could be notes from your one-on-one -on -one meeting, how they performed on a project, uh, email messages from other managers or team members, classes that they signed up to improve themselves. Uh, and then during the performance time, you have all this information in one spot for you. So let's just jump down to Bob. Um, well, maybe we'll jump down to Sue. So if we look at Bob, this is just kind of plain. I just, I did a couple of different, I'll go ahead and just bold that. I did a couple of different layouts. So you could just do columns. Here's his goals and objectives. Here's the things Bob needs to improve on. And then throughout the year, just add his wins. Some people are like, mm, too many columns, not enough space for information. So here's another option of how you could set this up. Here's the goals and objectives, and here's the actions that Sue is working on. A development need for Sue, uh, effective delegation. She just takes it all on herself and we need to work on that. So enroll in a CTT, CTC training class on effective delegation. Um, it's scheduled for 512, the date that's completed so that you know, yep, she took it. Uh, you may even wanna come back and add some notes. What are some key points that Sue learned out of that? And that'll help you watch for those as uh, the year goes on so that you can see, is Sue using those two or three uh, bullet points that she's like, hey, this is the big takeaways that I got from that training class. Nancy, and then, I, love all the I love all the plugs. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I figure if they're going to take training, they might as well take it from us. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm not sure about the Bob one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Sorry. Um, so the, the, the wins, um, you know, she successfully met uh, project elephant goals and deadlines. Um, the company was able to put the project on the market on the time. Sorry, I someone's at our door. Um, <laughs> excellent project management. Um, she motivated her other team members um, and she works well with her team. And this was completed in January, 2021. So it gives you those space. Feel free as you set this up. These are just examples um, so that you can go back and look at this when you're setting yours up and go, what were some of those examples Nancy showed me? So let's look at Diane. So Diane has a goal and objective is organizational skills, keeping her workspace organized. And so this gives you the ability, I told you you can add pictures in here, of taking a picture of Diane's workspace so that you can see, okay, here's what it normally looks like. And on February 11th, this is where Diane started. And again, to reach out, to schedule some coaching, to assist, uh, and then the time frame she's going to work on this between February and June. And you're going to ask her, I am so sorry, the joys of Nancy, working from home. Nancy, I can talk for a few minutes if you need to go answer the door. Um, I think you know, these... There's, there's somebody else to cover it. Let okay. me clap the dog out. <laughs> you go ahead, Jan. I'll mute myself for a second. And yeah. uh Perfect. I'll just make a comment. I just, um, I love this. You know, again, if you, if you think back to the Wall Street Journal quote, it's about there's a 40% of waste because people weren't taught organizing skills. And so that's where we see a lot of our clients struggle is they'll, they just don't have a plan. Like where do we organize things? And John, you had entered in the chat, like our company does three reviews throughout the year and we need like a single location for multiple reviews. So that, that's part of your strategy. Like as a company, right. what's our organization? What's our place that we're gonna all keep performance reviews? So it's like a macro organizational plan to clarify for everybody. And then as Nancy's showing you, then this is how you might set it up. So um, that's great. How good, Nancy? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I love it. You know, I never realized how busy this household is till I moved in. Um, okay. So uh, down here, then you can, what, you know, when is she going to work on it? And you can report. Um, and I have no idea what Jan told you guys while I was gone. 
Uh, just another one for John. And here is an example of one of my clients. Uh, what they did is they sent emails uh, that they received from others in kind of a 360 review uh, process tech feedback. They asked others that work with a particular employee to give feedback. And he took all of those and he just put them on one page. And so instead of having to go through at performance review time, multiple pages, he could just look through each of these pages and he could add notes on top of uh, the email messages that he received in here. And so again, just an example of what can be done um, and how easy it can um, make your, make your uh, life with that performance review and reduce the stress. Another, so with the team performance, that is something that you probably want to keep, maybe just you see it because you're gonna get feedback from other people. You're gonna put your own feedback in there. You might be sharing some of it with your direct report, but maybe you don't want to see them to see all your notes. So your personal performance and your team performance section or pages that you might want to keep to yourself. When we come to one-on-one -on -one meetings, these, this is information that I would encourage that you share with that person. So you don't want to have a section in a page that says, here's the meeting I'm going to have with Bob this week. And Bob has his own, here's the meeting I'm going to have with Nancy this week. And now we're both working off two copies. No, 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 no. That's the beauty of OneNote. It allows you to both be able to in, be in here at the same time, access the information and add to the information. So um, in a little bit, I'll come and I'll talk about different ways you might wanna set that up. So there's the process. And then here's, the, here's one option of how you might wanna set it up. That uh, you're gonna have a page for each weekly meeting and you're gonna capture the wins, what are the projects that they're working on? What continuing education or improvement needs for improvement are they working on? And what do they need from you? Um, and, and it could be what you need from them too, but typically what this needs is what are their needs? And so it gives both of you the ability to add to this agenda so that when you have that weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting, you both are on the same page and you know what they're, you're gonna talk about. They can, if you put information in here before the one-on-one meeting and the direct report goes and looks at it, they can go, oh, Nancy wants, and Bob can say, Nancy wants an update on Project Elephant, and I better be prepared to give that to her. And so that, that's kind of nice <clears throat> to have that ahead of time. Here's another option is I've seen put all your weekly meetings on one page, and this could be for the whole year, it could be for a month, it could be for a quarter, so that you have your wins, your projects, your education, your needs over here, and then the dates across the top. Uh, so similar, like you might set up an Excel spreadsheet. So I just wanted to show you another option of how you would do that. That can also go, oh, look at, you know, we had, if you do this for a quarter, you had a great win, Bob, in the beginning of the quarter, mm, but we haven't captured any wins since then. So it allows you to see all that information on one page. A whole year might get a little wide, um, so you might want to do a quarter. And a month is probably a little shy. Another way to do it, and, and I've had clients do it this way, is to put the weekly meetings on one page so that you just have to scroll through this way and find the different meetings and what was talked about in previous meetings. And there's no right or wrong, it's whatever works for you. When you're capturing action items, you could go ahead and capture those on the one-on-one -on -one meeting, add one more column and says, this is what Bob is gonna work on between now and our next week or between, you know, whatever the deadline dates are. But I've had some clients say, you know what? I wanna see all the things that Bob's working on in one place. And so set something up similar to this. Here's the item, here's a date put the check marks here. So what do they need to do? And when they're completed, they can actually go ahead and check the box. What's the due date? Um, the owner, uh, I, it could be that, you know, Bob's working on it, or maybe Bob is working with a team member on that particular thing, status updates. And then just, this is just another uh, format of that. So again, really just wanted to give you examples. Now what happens when they're done with these? Because if this one's done and this one's done, 
and this one's done. It's kind of cluttered of going what's done and what's not done. <clears throat> so I've had several clients that, that uh, like the idea of copying. So if that's the format that you like, taking them as soon as they're done here, if A1 is done and just copying that or, or cutting it, you can, and just pasting it onto the completed actions. This also gives you a nice way to look at at the end of the quarter or the end of the year when you're doing performance and go, wow, here's the 52 things that Bob um, was working on and here's all the ones he got done and here's the ones that he's still working on. So just a lot of different ways and, and views and some templates and you can set those up as templates, uh, which makes life really easy. So I said in the beginning that I was going to talk about a couple of different options. If you do, so let's say you said, all right, Nance, I'm going to create department performance and I'm going to do a section, these are sections, for each one of my direct reports. But because you want to share those with all the direct reports, if you did one notebook, you would need to password protect each of these sections. In OneNote, you can only password protect a section. You cannot password uh, protect the whole notebook or a particular page. So for the direct reports, that'd be fine if I have Bob and Diane and um, whoever else I had, Sue and John up here. Um, that's great for them because they go into the notebook and all they have to do is enter one password for their section. But for you as the manager, you have to remember the passwords for every section. And sometimes that drives you bonkers. Uh, also a big thing when you password in OneNote, when you put a password on a section, if you ever forget the password, you no longer have access to any of that data. It is locked. You cannot recover it. There is no password recovery at all uh, for OneNote uh, sections that have been password protected. So another idea is to create a OneNote notebook for each direct report. And so the, you know, the, the notebook name could be Bob. And then inside of here, your sections could be, here's your goals and objectives. Uh, here's your performance, the things you're working on that you need improvement on. Here's the wins that you have um, and whatever else you want it for the sections. So that gives you uh, the ability to expand. It also gives you the ability to say, you know what, all those things can go over in pages. And in Bob's notebook, we're gonna do 2021, 22, 23. And that gives you the ability to be able to, both of you to look back and go, what was I working on last year? Oh, I'm still working on that. Um, what were those projects that I did really well? Oh, that's right. And, and if you put some notes in there, you can even have the memory of why did that project run so well? And the one I'm working on right now isn't. So that's just another way to set that up is one notebook for each report. Um, so do a shared notebook with your direct reports for your one-on-one -on -one meetings and a second notebook to capture each direct report wins or needs for improvement. So I, I would say that doing a team uh, performance and having either a page or a section for each of your direct reports for yourself, that goes ahead and meets the, the second criteria of this. And then, oops, then that shared notebook is a OneNote notebook for each direct report. So what you're going to see over here is if you have, here's my department performance, and then you'll have a notebook for each of your direct reports, Bob and Sue and John and Diane, um, that only they have access to because you can share just with one person. Okay, I'm a little bit early, but that is that's what awesome, I have. Yeah, that's great. We can go ahead and I'll wrap up my slides and we can open, open it up. So Go ahead and start entering into chat if you already are, have questions for Nancy. And I just need to close out on a couple slides and then we'll open the floor. Um, so a lot of people that have just found us kind of on the internet or whatever. Um, oh, are we on these? <laughs> so, all right, just a reminder um, again of the sessions.
Um, we've got uh, May 11th is the Outlook one. And I don't know, Walter, if you got the links fixed. We were having issue the, the links on the chat for some reason weren't working. So go to our website, ctcproductivity.com. If you go to uh, slash webinars, and that's where you can sign up and register for any upcoming webinars. And you can also see recordings. Um, so again, May is kind of Outlook, May uh, basic skills on calendaring, and then June's gonna be kind of the new features within 365 around uh, scheduling external meetings. And what's the next one? So a lot of people that have found us and kind of attended these sessions think all we do is 365. So um, just a little bit of an update about CTC. We, we do a lot. We do a lot of coaching work, consulting work, anything around productivity. So process improvement, um, coming up with metrics to track productivity-based things. Um, we do a lot of training and public speaking on, again, a lot of leadership topics as well as technical topics, soft skills, again, anything around being a more effective leader or being more productive. And I think that's it. So yeah, now we can open up for Q&A. So feel free, you guys are welcome to continue entering into chat or if you wanna unmute yourself and ask a question, that's great. So if anybody wants to unmute themselves, we'll start with those and then we'll go back to the questions in chat. I would like to um, add that uh, typically I recommend managers let set up the system, but then let the, let the employee manage this. And then you can add notes as you see fit or add an email that you got from a client or something, but let them manage this. And then you discuss it on your, at, at your weekly one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not such a burden for you, especially if you're you have, you know, 10 direct reports, you're not filling out 10 of these, you're letting them do that. Perfect. Great point, Walter. So what questions? So Liz is asking, how do you set up the tables for the action items, Nancy? Okay, so let's take a look at that. So here's the action items. I'm just going to go ahead and add a blank page so that we can start from scratch. And um, we're just gonna say action up here. So there's a couple of ways that you can add a table. If you already know what your column headings are, you can just uh, start typing. So if I say item and then description. And so what happens when I typed item, I hit the tab key and it automatically will go ahead and um, create the column for me. So due date, when I'm done with my column headings, I just hit enter and it goes ahead and it creates the next row. And if I am tabbing right now, and that is creating a whole bunch of extra rows. So that's one way that you can do it. Another way that you can add a table is you can actually come up to insert and then table. So if you know what size that you want your table, you just go ahead and draw your boxes and there you go, it inserts your table. Love it. And then uh, there's a question, on how do you lock and share notebooks? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by lock, but for share- Probably protect. I'm gonna guess you, protect. When you have a, a notebook that you've created and you right click on it, you get an option to go ahead and share this notebook. So the first thing is you do need to make sure that your notebook lives in a shareable location. If your notebook lives on your C drive or on the server, it's not as easy to share. So with 365, the two locations where a notebook would live are either in your business, your company OneDrive, so it's your personal space, if we're within the company OneDrive is, or on SharePoint. Uh, and it can be a SharePoint site or it can be a, a SharePoint site behind a team um, that this could live on. Um, so typically for these, as a manager, I would encourage you to save this notebook on your OneDrive. And then once it's created, go ahead and share this notebook. And I want to share with people. And it says, who do you want to share with? I just go ahead and type them in there and then they can share. So right now I could also share this notebook with Walter. I don't know what happened. Where'd you go, Walter? And um, I can go ahead and share. What that is going to do is that is going to send out a link to him. And you see up here, it says, what can he do with it? And he can edit it. If you do not want Walter to edit it, 
I could have changed this and said, no, he only gets to look at it. So when you talk about how do you lock it so that they can't do anything with it and they can only view it, when you are sharing before you, as you're doing the share, go ahead and change from they can edit it to they can only view it. But with those one-on-one -on -one notebooks, as Jan was saying, and, and as I said through the presentation, you really want to go ahead and have your direct reports to add information to it. I mean, that is the huge bonus and the benefit of having this collaborative space. So I'm hoping that that answered the question, how do you share it and how do you lock mm -hmm. it down by saying they can only view it? And answer the question. See. Oh, go ahead, Walter. Nope, it wasn't me. Yeah, it was, it was me. Sorry, Jan. Oh, um, yeah, we utilize a, a, a spreadsheet um, for our uh, reviews and uh, the reviews are done four times a year. And is, are the, uh, is it able to uh, drag and drop a, a form into these tabs? Um, so is the form in Excel? Yes. Okay. So if you are using OneNote desktop, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new page. You actually can insert a spreadsheet and you can insert an existing Excel spreadsheet or a new spreadsheet. Okay. Now your form, when you pull that in, what's gonna happen is it's going to now embed it. So your original form, wherever that is stored, that is gonna stay intact, okay? When they come in and, uh, so let me go ahead and do an, uh, where do I have one? I wasn't prepared to show this. <laughs> um, if you bring in an existing Excel spreadsheet, you, you get, when it pops into the bottom here, as I don't have one quickly, I can pop in here. Um, you'll, you'll see that there's an edit. And so your Excel spreadsheet is, is sitting here. And when you hover over it, there's an edit. And when you click on edit, it opens it up in Excel. So that Excel spreadsheet will open and people can populate it. Okay. So you can pull that same Excel spreadsheet into different pages and it makes a separate copy of it. So if you need it for all of your direct reports need to fill this out, right. you would want to bring it into a page for each one of them. It creates a separate copy on each page. And so when one person fills it out, it's not messing with what somebody else has. That's fantastic. Thanks. You're welcome, John. <laughs> Thanks. So Liz's question, uh, Lisa, I'll answer your question in a second here. Um, Nancy, Liz's question, how do you get tabs at the top versus the side? So you will see tabs on the top up here only in the desktop app. If you are using the Windows 10 app or if you are on the web, you do not have tabs on the top. You only are going to see the tabs underneath the notebook on the left-hand side or you may not even see them under the notebook if you're in the Windows 10 or on the web. When you're in a notebook, all you see is, I want it to pin it, all you see is the name and then you see your sections and then there's a second pane over that has your pages and then there's the page that you're actually going to write on. So it is only a feature of the desktop Windows version. Jan, I just don't remember on your Mac, if you're in the Mac OneNote, do you also see the tabs up here on the desktop Mac version? I don't think so. I think I've, they've seen yeah. them on this side. So I, so I think it is only a function of the Windows desktop version. Right. So are you on a Mac? A is that, is, was that your question? Are you on a Mac? Was that Liz's question? Yeah, it was Liz. No, I'm on the um, Windows. Yeah. Okay. So do, you have the, do you have the desktop app? No. Okay. So if you um, can't find it easily, so if you go down and you search your computer and you search for OneNote, mm -hmm. typically it's going to pop up too, and it's going to say OneNote, and it's going to say OneNote Windows 10. Okay. If you don't see both of them, go to a browser and type in OneNote for Windows Desktop, and it'll take you to the page where you can download the application. Okay, perfect. You're welcome. Thank you. So Lisa's question is a little bit around, how do I, Nance, I can just answer it and you guys can add in. Um, it was really around like, how do I take notes when I'm trying to be paying attention in a meeting? 
um, and make sure I don't miss stuff. So Lisa, what I'd say is um, the, the key thing is to write something down that'll trigger your memory, right? So if you're observing maybe a direct report and they're doing something that you don't like, it's just what words will remind you of this um, would be the shortcut, right, to capture it. Um, but then we are advocates of having time between meetings, which isn't really the standard in most of our clients' environments. Everybody's back to back, but it's really a, a very unproductive world to live in. And so the idea is that coming out of meetings, many people um, need time to digest and write their thoughts down and get things added to their calendar and their task list. Um, so if you're jumping from one meeting to the next meeting, you probably are gonna lose a lot of great content and information. So you probably need a little space to breathe. And so having time to write down all your thoughts coming out of that meeting about somebody's behavior and performance as well as the topic, um, would be a good idea. So I hope that helps. If I can add to that, Lisa, um, what I will typically do when I'm running meetings is, especially if it's uh, items where you're asking participation or you're, you're asking the group, you know, what's the best way to do this or how should we do this or that, have people go in and write their own notes. Have them all be in one note at the same time, and everyone can be in one note at the same time, and you can add their own thoughts, and, and then you can just clean them up at the end. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point, Walter. I guess I was thinking, Lisa, that you were talking more about observations about performance review. Um, but if you're just talking about note taking, um, we're advocates of there being very distinctive roles. So if you're the one facilitating a converse, the, the meeting, you shouldn't be the note taker. So I'm, I'm not sure where the question was coming from, but it is really hard to be a meeting facilitator and writing notes and taking action items. So you wanna divide that responsibility out to make sure it's done right, for sure. So any, any other questions? Otherwise we are good. We don't hang out in meetings unless there's a reason. So any more questions either? On uh, Jan, this is Robin. My one question was about how to get those emails when she was going through, Nancy, when you were going through how to get those emails, you had a page with a bunch of emails. Is yep, that, yeah. How do you get those? And, and I was just going to say, I forgot to show you guys this. So I, <laughs> uh, I, I had ahead of the, the game here. I went ahead and uh, sent an email uh, to me that says, hey, I wanted to share how Sue has handled this project. So again, I am using the Windows Desktop Outlook app. And in the ribbon, there is a OneNote icon. If for some reason it is not there, you also can right click on the email message and see OneNote. When I click on OneNote, it opens up and it says, all right, it's gonna show me what I've recently been on, what page I'm currently on, and all the notebooks that I have access to. So I am going to go to Department Performance and I am going to go to Team Performance. And because this email is about Sue, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add it to Sue's page. I just go ahead and click OK it's gonna go ahead and add that to the bottom of Sue's page. And now I can go ahead and I can resize it. I can add extra notes to it. I can do what I want to it. I do also, if I'm like, mm, you know what? I don't want it on Sue's page. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna send it one more time. I'm gonna send it to the team performance. And this time, because I selected the section and not a page, it's gonna create a new page when it sends it over there. And so that gives me the ability now to just click and hold it. And because it's pertaining to Sue, I can put it under Sue. And if I right click, I can make it a sub page of Sue. So if I want each of those emails separately, I could go ahead and just send it to this, to this section and then make it a sub page of Sue. Or if now I had another one, I could go ahead and send it to the same page and then I can rearrange these however I want to rearrange them. Did that help? Yes, that's cool. That. So Andrew's asking a question. Andrew, I might have you unmute. You're saying documenting a conversation in a Teams channel. Do you mind clarifying? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so I've had some uh, oh, you muted yourself yeah. again, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've had some conversations in the team channel. I wouldn't mind doc that, you know, moving them over to 
a performance thing saying, hey, we this came up like two weeks ago in our Teams channel. I mean, is there an easy way of moving that into OneNote or you just copy paste it? Is it in a Teams, is it in a, a channel post, so the channel conversations, or yep. is it in a private chat? No, it's in a, it's in a channel conversation. Okay. So like, give me a like, second. I, I did not have Teams open. So let me just open Teams here. So let's say that this was the conversation that you had. Everybody replied to the conversation right here in your team channel. Has everyone seen Teams, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you come up to the, the top of this, you are able to do more options. And you can't send it to OneNote. They don't have that option right now, even though there's more actions. Um, but there's not a send to OneNote. But I can go ahead and I can share it to Outlook. So if I go ahead and send that to Outlook, it is going to create an email message and it can send that particular, uh, what I don't know is if it's only gonna send that top piece um, or it's gonna send, so it's gonna send the top piece that was there. And if you wanna go back to the whole, um, you could go, go back into Teams, but this is email. Once it's an email, you can send it to OneNote. Now, there is a possibility that you can create a power automate, a flow that would say, hey, take this conversation and send it from Teams. I have not done it yet. Walter, have you done anything like that yet in, in your work with clients? Uh, not, with the, not with the message, but it, it can be done, yes. Yeah. So it's really kind of messy. The other option is literally just to copy. So all I did, and just kind of like on a web page, right? Is I went to the beginning of that conversation. If I can get my mouse to do what I want it to do. Beginning of that conversation, and I just clicked and drug down, and now I could copy that and then paste it. So if I copy it and I pop back over to OneNote, and we'll just go to a new blank page here. Um, and we're gonna paste that in. So because I had uh, some attachments in there, it looks kind of funny, but it does go ahead and it puts the date and who made the comment and then whatever the comment was. So that is another way that you could get it out of a Teams converse channel conversation over into uh, OneNote. Also, if you're in, I meant to go to Teams, if you had a private chat over here, so, Jan, I don't think we have anything super hidden over here. Oh, we were and just I, talking about Walter recently. Yeah, that thank you. Was I was going to say. <laughs> and I wanted that of our private conversation. Again, I go ahead and highlight it. I copy it. I pop back over to OneNote. I'll just come down to the bottom of the page here. And I can go ahead and I can paste it. And so that does give you the date, timestamp, and who made each of the comments. Does that help, Andrew? Perfect. <laughs> All right, Nance, we're going to take one la last kind of simple one, and then we're going to end because we say we end at 1245. Um, uh, where to go? Stephanie was asking, how do you move the ad page on the left? Mine is on the right, if I got that right. Oh, the pages. So Stephanie, again, this is, I have to just keep reminding people that this is the desktop version. So your pages are currently on the right hand of your screen and you would like them on the left. So if you are in the Windows desktop version, you're gonna go up to file, come down to options, go to display, and the fourth one down says page tabs appear on the left. In any other version of OneNote, if you're on the web, if you're inside of Teams, if you use the Windows 10, you see sections and pages both on the left-hand side. Like when I have my notebooks pinned here, I see my sections, I see my pages, and then I see what's on my page. All other versions are set up like that and you cannot move the pages to the right-hand side. I have, a, I have a few people that I've been working with and their pages are on the right. And I'm like, don't you wanna move them to the left? And I'm like, no, I like them on the right-hand side. And I'm like, <laughs> well, at some point when Microsoft makes the desktop go away, which I will cry profusely that day, I'll have been mourning, um, you will have no choice but have your pages on the left. So um, it's a good time to move them over there to get accustomed to them on the left because that's how they are inside of Teams as well. 
Perfect. A, last last question with this. Thank you. I, I managed to do it. But uh, if somebody has two one note account, can they merge them into one one account? Or? Um, I don't know exactly what you mean by merge, but as you see here in my desktop version, I am actually signed in to six different accounts. So these notebooks that I have over here don't all live in one account. So you can just go ahead and sign in to any of your other accounts and have access to notebooks from any account that you're signed in. Is that what you were asking, Stephanie? Or are you asking merge notebooks? It, I would have liked to have them all, the notes all in the same because I opened a previous one a long time ago and now I would have liked to have them so I can just copy paste them, but I would have preferred to. The, the easiest to do if you can is to go ahead and open that other notebook. So let's say it's the department performance and the OneNote training, because once you have it in here, so I'm going to go ahead to this one down here that says CRM and I, when I right click on it, I get an option to move or copy. And so I can go ahead and say, I want to copy it to department performance, or I want to move it to department performance. Um, so if I'm, if I'm moving it, that, that's you just go ahead and move into department performance and it'll do. You also, I can drag and drop once I have it in here, it just makes it really easy. I can click and hold and I can drag CRM up into this new team. So I would encourage you to log into that account open that other notebook and go, you know what? I don't want that old notebook anymore. I want all the stuff that was there in this notebook on this account and either right click and move or copy or just drag and drop from one notebook to the other. Those are also okay. fe features that right now the desktop, Windows desktop allows you to do, but you can't do it in the other version. <laughs> love it this, this all is, right thank you this is very um handy when especially if you have multiple uh tenants like you have you are on, on one team from you know uh, like a committee or something and then another team you can move and copy stuff between them and it's really helpful awesome all right gang we're gonna wrap up nancy rock as always that was great i hope we've got you guys even more interested in one note so um, thank you very much. And we would love feedback on these sessions. If there's anything we can do to make them more effective, better, you're welcome to enter it into chat privately to me or to, to all of us. Um, any feedback would be great. So we want to keep improving them. And if you have future topic ideas, we'd love to hear that as well. So thanks for being on the call, everyone. Thank you. See you next see you. month. Good to see a lot of you. So Nancy and Walter, um, Robert was going to stay on. He had a question. He kind of yeah. thought maybe, yeah, Robert, go ahead and ask your question if you don't mind. Yeah. So in watching this uh, performance evaluation, I, I saw a lot of similarities. So here at Wright County, I moved from being a, an elected auditor treasurer to an appointed one. So instead of reporting to the citizens, I now report directly to five commissioners. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a reverse performance evaluation, but I'm just trying to think of how I could set up a, a OneNote where I'd list all five of my commissioners, find out what projects they're passionate with, and take my notes accordingly. So instead of me evaluating 32 employees, I now am evaluated by five. I don't supervise anybody. I, I think you have a couple of options. Um, you know, I had put in, let's see, let's go to here. I got to find the right one. You know, if you did something like this, you could put, you know, what are their priorities over here on the left-hand side? You could put the commissioners on the top. So if there's some crossover or, or vice versa. So you could do something like this as an Excel spreadsheet, so to speak, a table in here to capture that. Yeah, or, that's perfect. You could, or you could do one at a time. Um, and so you could have, just like I have here, so here's each of those five commissioners that you report to, and in here would be, you know, what are they passionate about, and how can I, uh, what, what am I going to do, or how, well, how can I help them meet that goal, um, what, whatever those top level things are for you, Robert. Yeah, because in the contract, I have six really defined 
projects that they, they want me to be responsible for. And then of course that seventh is, and other duties as assigned. Um, and each of them have their own pet projects. Um, primarily for the new commissioners, it's been education, walking them through how to review uh, the budget reports that they're seeing, coming up to the budget process, you know, what is it gonna look like? What do I need to know? Um, but yeah, so I've got the six defined responsibilities. I could list that out. And as I meet with them, just indicate what is, what's their priority for that. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah. I, now, I, 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 what I would, if I can just state, I would probably create one master where you have the six defined priorities, but then have each one of them be able to take their own notes on their own page. Um, you know, so you create one master sheet that has your six priorities and then kind of notes on the side. Mm -hmm. And then you copy that, uh, that page for each person because they are going to have some other, like you said, they might want item number three. I want that to be number one for me and I'll put that up there and I'll make notes around this or whatever. Then they can have their own, own, own pages. It's gonna make it a little more diff difficult for you because you're gonna have to go through five different pages to see you know, where they are all at. But well, what I like about that is that's now the work paper that when I sit down with you, let's go over this. What did you that, mean? That, because mm -hmm. I'm, trying, I'm trying to manage their expectations of me. Um, okay. That's exactly yeah, it. The, the yeah. nice thing, too, about using the, the Windows desktop OneNote version is that, let's say this is an action item for you. Mm -hmm. If you come up into your home ribbon, you can add that to your Outlook task list. So the OneNote desktop is connected to your Outlook and it will put it on your task list for you. Okay. So any tasks that you have, you're able to go ahead and go, oh my gosh, now I have to go to OneNote for my tasks, with all my meetings for them. No, you just go ahead and you add them to your Outlook tasks, you get them connected, you go to your Outlook task list, or even to your to-do app if you're using that, or if you've been in those sessions, and you will be able to see um, those tasks that you flagged and add it as to your Outlook tasks in OneNote. So along that same line, one of these other projects as other duties as assigned, um, gravel tax. Never thought gravel tax would be a big hot topic for any commissioner, but it is. And it's, it's become a huge project. Um, and I have, I have started notes on gravel tax. So would you recommend setting up a separate workbook or separate page? for gravel tax? Uh, so one of my thoughts is, as we keep talking about this is that you might wanna do sections for those six, this, those six areas okay. because that gives you the first page in each section. So let's say this section here is gravel tax. The mm -hmm. first page can be the overall what they told you you're supposed to be working on. And then that, and then where I would go, or one of the ways you could go with this is that each of these pages, as Walter said, so each of them, each of these six commissioners you're working with have something to say about gravel tax. And that gives you they, them a page that they can go ahead and continue to put notes on. Because it's a whole section, any notes that you add, so uh, if we go ahead, let me add another page. And so your first one is your main, here's what gravel tax is all about and what I'm supposed to focus on. And now all of these pages underneath of here that you turn into sub pages are all your notes. So this is you. And then there's a page or multiple pages for each of the commissioners to add their 10 cents, um, uh, what they have to say about the gravel tax. And they get to see what everybody else thinks and they get to see the notes and the information, the research that you found. Right. So one last related question. That, so they don't really want to learn one note. So, I mean, I could set this up and share with them, but well, I don't know how to use one note, Bob. Let's not do that. Um, okay. How would you? And, and, and that's fine. They don't have to. Um, if they send you an email about it, right, and, or you have a conversation, um, a meeting with them, you could go ahead and add it right to OneNote. If they have an email they send you with information about gravel tax, I just showed you how to send the email over to here. 
If you have information you want to share with them, but you don't want to share the notebook because you're like, they're never going to see it. Again, a feature in the desktop version is email a page. Oh, there you go. So if I come up to this page, I go ahead and email it. Of course, it opened on a different screen. It goes ahead and embeds that page, a copy of that page. It's editable still um, at, in the body of the email that gets sent out. So oh. for you, you can send information to them from OneNote and information that you received in email from them to OneNote. All right. You, yeah, then you just copy and paste it back in, so. Okay. So gang, I think we gotta wrap up. I hope that was helpful. Robert. Yeah, that was, you thank you very much. Things. I look forward to yeah. the next month. Awesome, yeah, please All join right. us. That'd be great. Thanks, Robert. So, okay, thank All you. Right. Thanks, Robert.